We are very pleased to announce the arrival of our project management features for the Microbiometer app. Starting with version 3.5, users will now be able to create projects that permit sharing of sample data among a group of users and customization of the types of information that are associated with each sample. So I found this meme and it made me think a lot of, of a lot of different things. First, almost no software is intuitive to use unless you're a 12 year old on a smartphone. Second, software developers are the only ones who really know how to use the software they write, and even then, they can be surprised by its behavior. Therefore, I ask for your patience and feedback as you use this new project management feature of Microbiometer. Reach out to us at support at microbiometer.com. Based on customer feedback, we saw the need to increase the capabilities of the Microbiometer app. Users wanted a way to share data, meaning if they are several users working together and collecting data, how could one or all of them access this data rapidly and easily? Microbiometer project management now allows collaboration and collection of all the data from different users in one location. Current users of Microbiometer have access to several standard data fields, such as soil classification, crop type, and irrigation data. To accommodate the need to store different types of data, we have added the ability to add custom fields of various types to each new project. There are two ways to access the project management settings screen. If you go to our web portal at www.prolificearthcloud.com, you can log in and click on the project management icon. The other way is from within our smartphone or tablet app. We recommend using a tablet in landscape mode because as you'll see, project management requires a lot of screen real estate. Okay, so first let's focus on <clears throat> the collaborative aspect of project management. There are two types of project members, co-owners and members, and each type has different privileges regarding editing the project. In the project management screen, there are three icons to the right of the project chooser. Clicking the first icon opens a dialog for you to enter the name of the project. The middle icon allows you to join a project. For any project, there are two codes, a co-owner join code and a member join code. These are random arrangements of 10 numbers and letters and are unique for every project created. Co-owners and members have different privileges as you will see shortly. You can email these codes to others you wish to become either co-owners or members of the group you have created. They would then go to the project management screen, click join a project, and enter that code. The join code method of forming groups is common in collaborative academic software, where a teacher can display the join code at the front of the classroom and all her students can type it in on their classroom laptops. Since as a project owner, you would need to know the emails of everyone you wanted to join because you had to send them a code, why not just add them to the project yourself? Well, we thought that was a good idea. Clicking either the co-owner or member button brings up a new screen. Here, you type in a member's email. Once a valid email is entered, the icon to the right changes to a question mark. Clicking this icon or simply pressing enter will find out if this email has an account on the server. Okay, we found out this account exists. If the account exists, then the icon changes again. This time clicking on it or pressing enter will join that account into the project. Now we see the account listed under current members. The new member will get an email notifying them of their membership in the new project. If the account you are adding to the project does not already exist, clicking the icon on the right will create the account and the user will get an email notifying them of one, their account creation, two, their membership in the project, and three, instructions on how to reset, or in this case, create their password. Okay, so now let's discuss what owners and members can and can't do with setting up a project. Owners can do everything, as you can see on the table at the top. They can add and remove members, create project fields, delete fields, change the type of a field, and edit a field's properties. We'll see what types of fields can be created shortly.
The ability for members to add or delete fields are controlled by the two switches marked by the arrows. The last two items correspond to permissions for each field in the project. We will revisit this, but next we should discuss what adding and customizing a project field looks like. Okay, so we click Add New Data Field, and a new field appears. We can then give the field a new name, and then choose a type. We want this to be a choice field where the users will select from a predefined group of choices that are perhaps project dependent. Click the plus icon to enter a new choice. After entering the name, hit enter or press accept to create the new choice. Repeat this process to generate several choices for your project members. To delete a choice, select it and then press the delete icon. Okay, so here we've created a new field called plant density and it is of type number. We, since plants, you can't have a half a plant, I don't think. So we'll say we have whole numbers and let's say it ranges from one to 20 and we wanna say it's one to 20 plants per meter squared. What if we want a number that needs to be represented by a fraction or a decimal? Here we've added a new field called average height and our units are in centimeters. Since we can have partial centimeters, we make this a decimal. We can choose how many decimal places or how much precision to give this field with the two arrows shown here. See, I clicked on the right one and now I've given it two decimal places of precision. I told you we'd get back to the field specific permissions. If a field is member editable, that means members can alter the settings you have created on the right, such as precision, minimum and maximum and units. Perhaps you don't want them to be able to do that. So turn off their ability to change those settings. See how we've changed these to not member editable? Many of the other field types don't have options to set up. However, there is a special group field that needs to be introduced. The group field is a container for other fields. As you can see here, we have clicked new subfield and added two subfields to the weather group called average temp and average rainfall. And we set our minimums and maximums and our units. So let me point out another thing that we can do. We can have subgroups within a group. So weather was our first group that we created. And we've got two subfields, average temp and average rainfall. Now, um, we have a subgroup within the weather group called trends, and we have an item called temp inside trends. So you can nest groups within groups. And one thing I want to point out here is that there's um, <clears throat> an option here to add name to subfields, add name to subfields. In this case, I have chosen to turn that on, and you can see that our group name is trends, and our field name is temp. But since we're adding the name of the group to each subfield, this now gets the name Trends Temp. Okay, so here we are in the Edit Sample Details screen. And this is outside of project management settings, but once you've uh, measured a sample and you come to the Sample Edit screen and it's assigned to our project, which we happen to be Stone Barns, We've got all these fields that we added, minimum, plant density, average height, etc. So um, this is what it looks like. We've got our precision was set for two um, decimal points for the average height, and we can see that comes out here. One decimal point here. This plant density was in whole numbers. And I want to mention that you know, I've changed the units to um, meters to the minus two because it's actually... A density is per square area, so you need the minus in the exponent. 
And I did that in the project management setting. So I changed the units there and it shows up here. After you have set up your project or projects, when you go to read a sample, you can assign that sample to a project before you read the test card. Here we have two new projects to choose from, as well as one called unassigned. Unassigned means that this sample won't belong to any project of which you are a member. If you are already a user of Microbiometer, then all the samples you have taken are unassigned to any project. If you would like to change the project to which a sample belongs, click the group icon in the sample edit screen. A screen pops up that allows you to choose the project to which this sample should be assigned. Here are the three choices I have currently. By choosing either cannabis trials or AMF trials, this sample will now become part of that project. Now that we've learned how to set up a project and assign samples to projects, let's talk about a function that we built in to make your life even easy easier. The third icon on the project management screen enables cloning of a project. Let's suppose you have a project that you've been working on and you've set up all the fields you like, but now you've been tasked with managing another similar farm or garden or what have you, and you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Simply clone a project you like, add, delete, or modify fields, and you are ready to go. Thank you for watching our project management setup tutorial. If you have any questions, please reach out to support or info at microbiometer.com. Please visit our YouTube channel for more tutorials and educational videos. Happy growing to you all.